happy birthday to you. And so we, we give honor to the Spirit of Christ. And um, we're going to uh, venture into um, a teaching uh, for the next three or four weeks that I hope will be a blessing to you. And um, I have spent a considerable amount of time doing uh, study on this and uh, I hope that it will help you and uh, the premise uh, of the teaching uh, for the next couple of weeks and I'll have a handout for you. I really want you to do some listening and, and talking to me with me uh, this evening and the, the topic is from relationship to friendship, from relationship to friendship. And um, the premise or the scripture is going to come out of uh, Proverbs. Chapter number 18. And the key verse is going to be the, 20, the 24th verse. And so I really want to talk about, um, and the Lord has been dealing really, really with me, with the crystal, about relationships. And earlier this year, we talked a little bit about relationships back in the spring. Um, but um, the Lord really, I believe, impressed me um, to go and deal with it again. Um, not all relationships end up being friendships. Um, friendship is very, very important. Um, but um, how do you go from having a relationship with someone um, and then build it to friendship? Probably that should be changed. You have relationship and then friendship is up here. Um, if, if one has uh, at least one true friend, then you should consider yourself most blessed. Amen. Most people don't have any friends. That's right. They don't. Uh, That's right. And part of it, um, and we're going to talk about why People don't have friends. And what, what is the idea, what's the thought of this friendship? Um, out of relationships um, and, and getting to know people um, comes not just friendship, but I call them lone rangers. Amen. Out of relationships, there are Superman. Mm. Um, out of um, uh, the relationship, you got you got long range, you got Superman, and then mm. everybody's full, mm. and some people are so desperate mm -hmm. for relationship, that they'll do anything for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and people will use them and use their resources, but never getting friendship. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's, not, um, it's not good, it's not healthy for people not to have mm -hmm. friendship. Um, and this crazy thing um, started in the late 80s, um, and I know where it came from. It came from a, um, a teaching where people say, people are not my friends, they are just my associates. Mm -hmm. Associates. You all know where that came mm. from? Mm. No, sir. Kmart. Mm. Walmart. Mm. 
they started calling their employees associates. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. And so some dumb preacher <laughs> picked up a worldly um, phrase, catchphrase, and started calling people that they were connected to associates. Mm -hmm. You don't find that word in the Bible. That's or anything right. close to that word. That's right. So people and and many of us are stupid enough to walk around telling folk, well, I don't have any friends, I just have associates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the pre word prefix of <laughs> uh -oh. associates? Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> Some people didn't get that. <laughs> I have associates. Mm -hmm. The prefix of associate is. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. Shorten it even more than that. <laughs> Just take oh. off. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. Amen. That's it? And so we are saying things and really saying nothing. Amen. You're trying to tell folk, well, I just don't trust people. I don't like people. And I, I'm connected to them because they're on my job or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is probably not the word that you want to use. And actually the word associate is more closely akin to friendship than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we call it a social. That's it. Um, and the Lord um, wanted to teach us how to build relationships. Um, it is in, um, actually, in, in Genesis where um, God speaks, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, uh, seven times, seven times, God created something. And each time he created something, he said, it is good. It is good. Or God said, he saw that it was good. Amen. Two times he said, he saw that it was good. Five times he said, it was good. Amen. When he created Adam, he says nothing. <laughs> That's right. Isn't that something? Amen. Now his crowning creation, he made a tree and he said, that's good. He made a rhinoceros. <laughs> That's good. Amen. He made the Euphrates. That's good. He made stars, the moon. Yes, That's good. Yes, but when he created Adam, he burped. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you never see in Genesis That's right. where he said, when he created Adam, it's good. That's right. Other than in Genesis, he says, it is not good for man to be alone. So my question to you is, did God make a mistake? What? Seven times he said it's good. Or he saw that it was good. He creates man, he doesn't say anything, and then later he says it's not good for man to be alone. Well, why would he say of a rock, that's good. Of a sun, that's good. But his crowning creation, it's not good for man to be alone. Why? Yes, sir. Because uh, when, when Adam was created, God created Adam to be close to him or made him 
similar to who he was. And he created Adam in such a way that even God knew that by creating him so much like him, that he had to have some type of relationship. He had to have a fellowship other than just with him, but someone that he could touch, someone that he could uh, communicate with. Okay. okay. All right. I, I, we can work with that. We can work with that. Somebody find in Genesis, uh, either the first chapter, second chapter, where God said, let us make man in our own image. Does anybody know where that is? Genesis 1 and 26. Genesis 1 and 26. That's one of those scriptures. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Bishop Hargrove made us quote. I mean, mm -hmm. if we didn't quote that scripture, 126 <laughs> verbatim, you weren't going to preach for a year. <laughs> Where's the comma go? Where's the period go? You know. 126 speaks of God's Elohistic nature. Mm. Right? And hear this, and this is for those of you that are interested in Hebrew theology. Um, and a lot of times we hear God let us make man in our own image. We refer to it as Elohim. And actually, that is an error. There is no word in Hebrew called Elohim. It's not. White Europeans added that. Um, and actually, Elohim is a Canaanite word, mm. not a Hebrew word. Mm. And so Elohim means masculine plural mm. when it talks about um, understanding sentence structure and the meaning of the word. And so in, in the Hebrew term, there is only E, the only sufficient one. The God. Elohim means masculine plural, which means many gods. Mm. But El is the almighty God. So when anyone teaches you that um, Elohim, and we talked about it, I mean, it sounds good, but Elohim is a Canaanite word. It is a people who had multiple gods so you know who was he talking about let us make man in our own image he was talking about himself so when he said let us make man in our own image as you were here what is the image of God does anybody know what's the image of God his glory, his weight, his heaviness. So, I'm glorious. Hmm. Am I? Am I? Do I have glory then? The word "image" actually means fashion like, mm -hmm. to be like, fashion like, That's fashion like. Right. So, what did that mean? His glory. You know, Halloween is coming up. <laughs> I need to check out Facebook. <laughs> Helen, yeah, you need to read that. Uh, so, am I? Ooh, no, I would say part. I would say some parts. Some part is. Ooh. No, <laughs> I would say heaviness is is the Lord put his he put his spirit in us. He put uh, on definitely on Adam at that before the fall his image. When um, when the animals uh, were in the garden, mm -hmm. they could see God's glory on Adam. Um, by when he began to name the animals, um, that creative part of God was in Adam. Uh, the, the ability to speak, um, 
So God's DNA is spirit to be fashioned like like God, but he wasn't, he was not the L, but he was to be God on earth, the man. Okay. Representative, the, the ambassador. Okay, okay. You had your hand up. No, yes. Mm. But the image of God be Jesus. Beg your pardon? The image of God be Jesus. Mm. The Bible calls Jesus the expressed image of God. And what does that word express mean? He is the what? That's it. He is the manifestation of God that we could see without controversy. Great, great is the mystery of God for God. Manifest. Y'all know what I'm talking about? First mm -hmm. Timothy mm -hmm. 3, 16? Amen. Mm -hmm. For God manifests himself in flesh. In flesh. John chapter number 1, verses, I don't know, 14, 17. And God be came flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So there is something called express image, but that's not the question I'm asking. Right. Jesus is the expressed image of God. Okay. But what does image mean? Is it when is it almost similar to when you look you look at yourself in the mirror, but that's not you. You said so what is that called then? An image. No. Reflection. What is it called? Reflection. It's a reflection. Everybody say image is reflection. So God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Okay. But on the earth, man becomes the, the reflection of God. I wish I could do it today. I'm here, but if the lights were right, you can see my... You get it? Amen. Amen. I'm here, but my shadow is a just a part of me as I am. Amen. And so image means let us make man in our own image. So I will rule the heavenlies. My shadow will rule the earthly. And whatsoever you bind on earth, because man is my, Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret, secret place of the most high, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So what I am is the reflection of God upon the earth. And what's God's wife's name? Mary? No. Mm -hmm. Who was God's companion? Would it be the church? Not yet. Church hasn't been born. So he made Adam like himself. Mm -hmm. And the image here, that word image, is actually meaning wow, this is powerful. Authority. So I have the authority of God. The Kabod. C A K A P B O D. I have the heaviness. I have the glory of God. So if I have the glory of God, why did he tell then Adam it's not good for you to be alone? <laughs> I mean, was God, God good? I mean, isn't he good all the time? Even, even, even God wasn't alone in heaven. He still had angels. Okay. Well, I mean, man had a dog. Right. Man had a giraffe. Had a lion. So was man alone? <laughs> was he 
really alone? Come on, y'all talk to him. Companion-wise, relationship-wise, there was nothing there to relate. Bingo. To That's it. When God said it's not good for man to be alone, he didn't have something on his level that he could relate to. Hear this. Everything that God created in the earth was under Adam's feet. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Wow. Touch your neighbor is tell him and say that's the reason why you have problems with friends now. Because you want to get people beneath you. You choose people beneath you. Come on, sir. And God said, you can't relate with someone that's under your feet. Oh y'all ain't y'all get that. See, when I was a principal, I would have gotten fired if I dated one of my teachers. Amen. You want to know why? Because that teacher was, <laughs> was a subordinate. Amen. And that would to be express of an expression of over authority. Y'all didn't hear me. Amen. Because that teacher has to answer to me and I'm in a relationship with that teacher, that's an illegitimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Man, that's right. Woo! Y'all not hearing Amen. this. Wow. You're not getting this. So we end up having people that are not on our level and it becomes illegitimate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is sin? Sin is taking something that is legitimate and making it illegitimate. Mm. That's what sin is. Something that God set to be legitimate is now illegitimate. So, oh my God. So man couldn't have a relationship with a dog. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's right. Who's heard the crazy thing that diamonds are a <laughs> girl's best friend? Mm -mm. The devil is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and a dog is a man's. man's best friend. Where did that come from? Yeah. A European theologist. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I, oh my, touch your neighbor and say uh -oh. a dog uh -oh. just want to. <laughs> Something else almost came out. <laughs> the Bible called that bestiality. That's it. Amen. Amen. That's it. People love animals more than they love people. That's it. Man. You touch somebody's dog. That's it. That's it. I hit a dog last year. I stopped. Pray for the dog. Because some of them I did because I didn't want the dog. The owner pulled a gun on me. The dog was in the road. Hallelujah. And a Beamer going 90 just don't slow down for a 25 year old dog. That's a dog gone. <laughs> You ever heard the word dog gone? Y'all never can. Y'all are really tired tonight. Dog gone. But that dog meant so much to that owner, he was angry that I hit his dog. Not on purpose, of course. But he had a greater relationship with the dog than he did with even his wife. He did. He said, my wife could die today, but if this dog dead, dies, you will die today. Come on, somebody. Mm. The dog is still alive. <laughs> Walking like this dog. <laughs> I go by and see the dog every now and then because we become friends. But the dog is still alive. 25 years old, still alive. Wow. Still alive. Um, but it's not good for man to be alone 
because man needs someone to relate to. Mm -hmm. Hear this. Many of the crystal mm -hmm. are long rangers. Mm -hmm. Most of us in here mm -hmm. are long rangers mm -hmm. because we don't have friends that we can count on. Touch a neighbor and say, I know you got some friends. But they are ghetto friends. <laughs> ghetto means get mo. <laughs> get yo, get mo. That's it. And so when you have ghetto friends, ghetto friends are seasonal amen because when things are going right and you got money mm -hmm. come on it's get mo amen. and when they get upset with you it's get yo amen. oh y'all not here yes. and when they don't have want to have anything to do with you it's get so they get so mad with you Sit. Oh, y'all not hearing it? Yeah. So many of us don't even know what true friendship is because you've never been taught relationship. Come on, sir. Amen. Amen. Where do you get relationship from? And we're going to get into the scripture. I'm almost finished for the night. Second grade. Childhood development. It is at the second grade that children start learning about relationships outside the home and friendship. Now, how do second graders learn about relationship? What do you think? How? By play. What else? By Oh, let's play. Let's play. <laughs> what else? Starts with P. Parents. How about this? Teachers. How about this? Other students. If your parents never taught you relationship, Guess what happens? Amen. You become antisocial. Amen. And when you're in that antisocial mode in second grade, hear me, ladies and gentlemen, it follows you for the rest of your life. Amen. How old are you in the second grade? I know it is. How old are you? Seven. Seven years old. You learn about relationships outside of your home based on the second grade. Wow. Mm. Wow. And some of you don't have adult friends. You got friends that are still in the second grade. <laughs> they got mustaches, gray hair. But they are second grade. <laughs> oh, God, I can't. <laughs> so I'm an educator. And there are always second graders that are loners. They eat alone. They play alone. Hello, somebody. Amen. And guess what they do? They grow up alone. And I can trace your ability to relate back to the second grade. How many of you are comfortable around folk? Amen. I mean, just any folk. White folk, black folk, poor folk, rich folk, Amen. crazy folk, gay folk. <laughs> How many? I, <laughs> I think as long as there's not a lot of people, like, if there's one. I'm, ta I'm talking about multiple people. You know what most people do? Oh, are y'all learning something already? Amen. Ten or more people, most people shut down. 
Look at your neighbor and say, overstimulated. Because you're trying to figure out who do I talk to? Who do, how, do I talk to this one? And do I talk to this one? Can I run multiple conversations at the same time? Yeah. You learn all of that in the... And if you don't learn it in the second grade, people start calling you and that fits you for the rest of your life. Come on, somebody. If you are a leader and you are anti-social, <laughs> you're not going to have folk following you. That's right. That's right. You might have one person following you. That's right. That's right. And they are probably anti-social too. That's right. But haven't you seen some people, they call them the life of the party. Amen. Come on. Amen. They learn something in the what? Second grade. That's right. That's right. They had on their report cards all the time. I got whipped so many times because on my report card is He's a good student, but he talks too much. <laughs> Didn't know I was going to be a bishop. Come on, somebody. I was the life of the party. And I could be friends with the gay people, the rednecks. Come on. The head full of hair, fist in the air. That's it. Poor folk. Not because I was so great, it was because I had a great second grade teacher from Charlotte, North Carolina, Miss Bess. I promise I was going to marry her. Come on, somebody. Before I asked my wife to marry her, I found out if Miss Bess was still married. Come on, somebody. She taught me more about relationships. Because she found out I wasn't just talking to, I was just social and wanting to have relationships. But not every relationship you all becomes. Jesus had 12 disciples, but he only had three friends. Peter, James, and John, which were considered his, oh, come on, somebody, I'm teaching. How many do you have in your inner circle? Some of you have none. So when you get in trouble, you get in trouble by yourself. And when you do great, you rejoice. You have a party of one. And hear me, it is not good to be alone when you are struggling. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because you start talking to yourself. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's okay while you're getting accolades and things are going. But when you have no friends in your circle.